Genesis 35. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from thy face of thy brother Esau. That was in chapter 31. In chapter 31, Jacob met God. Uh, it wasn't chapter 31. Bethel is where Jacob met God. You see, he already said that. Where is the place where you met Jesus Christ? My place is 773 Broad Street, Waterford, Connecticut. My grandmother's living room and the house has been as far as I know has been sold or turned over and pretty much physically I can't return back to my Calvary unless I go knock on the door and say introduce myself and say can I just be in your living room <laughs> And maybe I could get a gospel witness, or maybe I'd be considered as a fruitcake. And for many of us, going back to where we met God at Calvary, that place may be gone. Or unreachable. Where Jacob was, was literally to go to Bethel. Bethel means the house of God. And it wasn't a building. And in my lifetime, there have been people who have received the Lord Jesus Christ. Their Calvary is jail. I hope they don't go back physically to their Calvary. Some do. Sorry to say. But we ought to go back to the place. And it may not be physical, but go back in our thoughts. To the day that we met Jesus Christ. Hanging on the cross. For me. I remember vivid the day. April 25th 1987. As Joseph Caswell. Had an open King James Bible. And he told me about heaven. He told me about hell. And he told me about the sinner that I was. In, my, in the room. Was, was a man named Joseph Whitmore. My brother Frank. My grandmother. Uh, was there I'm not sure if my grandpa was there and I remember kneeling down at her coffee table and confessing to the almighty God a, a sinner that I was and I did not want to go to hell that's my Calvary I didn't go all the way over to Israel and outside the city gates of Jerusalem And your Calvary may be a living room, it may be a prison, it may be a church, it may be a park bench, it may be, we, we had a guy saved at a park bench. There's a church in the book of Revelation that uh, they lost their first love. What is the first love? Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, I don't want to go to hell and I'm putting my faith, I'm putting, it's all on you. This Bible says if I confess, if I believe in my heart, if I call upon the name of Jesus, I'll be saved. There are many times I go back to Bethel. And I live in Florida. I'm not going back to Connecticut. So it's not a physical trip. It can be a physical trip, as I said. Maybe, you know, like I said, go knock on the door and Maybe that'd be allowed, or maybe I'd be considered a fruitcake. <laughs> and like I said, for, for many, your Bethel, your Calvary is no longer there. No longer attainable. But you can sit back in a chair. You can lay upon your bed. You can soak in the tub. You can go to a, a lakeside. You can go to a park. You can go anywhere and be at your first love and you can return to the day that God adopted you 
And you can return to the day where the Holy Spirit came and dwelt with you and cleaned. I remember the day I was saved, and I don't remember how many days after that. But I remember what, I, I mean, Saturday, I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. Sunday, I began witnessing. I'm not sure, I, I, it was within a week. It was before my baptism. I remember I, I was taking a shower. And I, I remember the, sh the, the shower. I can picture it right now, the shower. And I, I'm in that shower and, and cleaning. And it dawned on me. I am cleaner than I've ever been cleaned. I have been washed. This bar of soap, ivory soap, is not doing what Jesus did to me on Saturday when I got saved April 25th. And 33 and a half years, coming up to 34 years in April, frequently I go back to Calvary. I go back to Bethel in my thoughts, in my prayers. And I remember who the man I was. And I remember the man I am today. And I wonder if there was never a Calvary. What a wicked, vile life I would have had. Today we just got back from, from, from preaching the gospel and passing out gospel tracts at the farmer's market. If there was no Calvary in my life, there would have been no preaching. There would be no expectation of telling people about Jesus, how to be saved, and them believing. I might not have made it to 2021. In the late 1990s, as a Christian, still smoking, a lung doctor told my wife and I at his desk, I had six months to live. I had emphysema. Now, if I was lost and there was never a Calvary, and there was never a first love, there was never a first birth, a, a new birth, I would have died and gone to hell. I had a time after I was saved, a man pulled a 45, loaded, safety off, put it to my, the temple of my head. He would have pulled that trigger if there was no Calvary, if, 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 there, was, if there was no salvation, I would have died and gone to hell. See, it wasn't for Calvary, it wasn't for that place where I met Jesus Christ, where I met God, became a child of God. I repented of my sins and I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I was saved. If you don't go back often, as you need to go back, you're going to forget and you're going to commit the sin of one of them churches in the book of Revelation. They lost your first love. That's what destroys marriages and relationships. You lost your first love. You remember how, how you, you, you wanted to make yourself special and you, you wore the, the right deodorant and you, and you bathed often and, and you got the flowers and you got the, I mean, you wanted to impress. And when it dies, oh, it's just a humbug. It's just a, you know, everyday thing. And we just, you know, just say a prayer. It ain't that. When you go back to Bethel and you see the muck in the mire and the sin that Jesus Christ cleansed you out of. And how remarkable he has cleaned you out and he's brought you to satisfaction. To a hope, to a blessed hope. And today I am a child of God, and God is not always pleased with me, but He's pleased with me when I do what He what He tells me to do. Let me make one more remark. And it's so sad. I've been saved 33 and a half years. I've been in many churches. There's one thing that happens when, when a person gets saved. I make sure I do this, but it's not done. You tell that person that received Jesus Christ as their Savior, mark this day down. This is an important day. This is a day your name was written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. 
churches out there, happy birthday to you, celebrating the, the birth of sin. The birth of no new birth, and without the new birth, if, if you would have died from your physical birth, you would have gone to hell. And they don't celebrate the new birth. And the preacher told me, well, you know, not many people don't remember the day they were saved. Shame on you for not telling them how important the day is, the day you got saved. Everybody has gotten saved. The Lord used me. I tell them, this day is of importance. Tell them the date and tell them, remember it, write it down in your Bible. It is a day more important than the birth of your mother. And you know what? How do you go back to Bethel? How do you go back to Calvary? How do you lose your first love when churches, and I've been in three churches. All right. We got a birthday. Everybody sing happy birthday. What about the new birth? They don't celebrate the new birth. They celebrate the, 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 the birth that you were born into sin. There's something wrong with that. And if you are a born again Christian, you are saved. Your name is the Lamb's Book of Life. Don't lose your first love. Get back to Calvary. Where, I mean, you may not be able to do it physically. Get back to where you met God. Get back to where Jesus died for your sins and you called upon him for salvation. Get back there and spend a little time with the Jesus that saved you. Get confessing, get thanksgiving, get glorification on the day that you became a child of God.